Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and today I'm going to show you how I made a bouncy squig for my new squig army for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I really, really like bouncy models and that I have a bunch of those in my 40k army uh, where I have my bubblegum boys. And the usual thing I do is the thing I've done, for instance, on this, um, on this killer can here, you can see, which is uh, very bouncy. <laughs> I love it. This is just so much fun to me. Um, but you can see I've mounted it on... Um, it's actually just... I can remove it here. It's just a, um, a piece of clear plastic, really, just like this. I cut it from a large sheet of a clear plastic, and it works really well. Um, but it has some limitations, because obviously... Um, you can't really use it for like huge models. So for instance, you can't put a stomper or a Morkonaut or something like that on a, uh, on a bouncy stand like that made from clear plastic because the clear plastic does have a tendency to break. And I have had to uh, fix up my uh, bouncy orcs quite a few times. Um, I still think it works well and I still think it's a fun way of doing it. But I thought that for my squeak army, I wanted to make sure that each and every one of the models in my army can be, uh, can be bouncy. And so I needed a different approach. And what I came up with was using a sort of spring like this. And uh, this is my first go at it, but I filmed it and, uh, and thought that, that uh, perhaps you would uh, like to see how that was done as well. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a, um, a very bouncy, toxic looking base for, for instance, squigs. But I think, uh, I think you can apply this to a whole bunch of armies. There aren't really a lot of models that don't just look a little bit more fun on, uh, on a bouncy stand, right? To make the spring, I started off with a piece of ordinary steel wire. And the reason for that is both that I did not have any springs at hand. And also I want to make sure I could use the exact same method for the rest of the army. And with a piece of steel wire, you can make the spring as big or as small as you want to. So I thought that would be sort of the easiest way to go about it. To make the spring, I simply wrapped it around an old brush and I, that I thought would have the sort of perfect size. And I was quite happy with that. I experimented with a couple of different brush sizes, but found that this one worked better. And so I just stick with that. I then also at the end fashioned a small sort of loop that I thought I could then use for attaching the spring to the model when it was all done. I knew I wanted the spring to look like some sort of toxic goo effect, so I decided to paint it with a bit of fluorescent green paint. This is quantum green from Huge Miniatures. And the paint doesn't stick very well to the steel wire, but it doesn't really need to because in the next step I'm going to be covering it all up. Once the paint was dry, I grabbed some UV resin. This is glow in the dark lime from Green Stuff World. But you can use any sort of UV resin you want for a project like this. This was just the one I had on hand and I also thought that it would work really well as toxic goo. I want to try and apply the UV resin like it says droplets coming off from the spring because my idea is that there is some sort of toxic goo in the underground that propels the squeaks off from the ground and makes them even more dangerous and even more bouncy than they already are. And so I try to make sure that there are droplets on the spring that you can see that helps me tell that story. And then when I was happy with the placement of the UV resin, I simply grabbed a UV torchlight and held that in place until it was all dry. After the spring was done, I placed it on the underside of the tiny squig that it was being made for. And I made sure to place the tiny loop I'd made at the end of the spring on the underside of the squig. And then I used a bit more of the UV resin to attach it to the model. You can also use super glue for this, but it, super glue does have a tendency to look a little bit foggy. And that kind of ruins the look of see-through uh, effects that you make. Uh, and also the UV resin works just as well. You just need a tiny bit more patience while it dries under the, under the flashlight. For the base itself, I used some textured earth from Vallejo. Uh, I wanted it to look like it was some sort of rocky underground. And so this texture fit that perfectly. I also wanted to make sure that there was a place for me to attach the spring to the base. So I removed a little bit of the texture from the middle so that it was sort of like a tiny little, uh, a tiny little pool in the middle where you could have the goo coming out of the ground from. 
I then quickly dry brushed the texture with a bit of grey and then with a bit of white and I did nothing else with it just because I thought that it needed to be as I said relatively simple and because there were plenty of colors both on the squig and on the spring and everything else so there was no need to really do anything more and as I've said many times before on this channel I'm a bit of a lazy painter so if I can do something very quickly and easily I'll just I'll just go right ahead and do it. I'll just cheat a little bit. Um, so in the middle of the uh, of the base where I wanted the toxic pool, I painted it first with a little bit of white, uh, just to make sure that the colors I would use afterwards would be clearly visible because I want this to look very toxic and, and very attention grabbing. Then I took some uh, contrast paints. This one is striking scorpion green and I first painted the entire surface with that. And then I added a little bit of Achillean green just to make a little bit more of the uh, yeah, make it a little bit more visually interesting and make it look like there was some sort of movement in, in the toxic goo underneath. Then I covered the entire thing with, with more of the UV resin, more of the glow in the dark lime from Green Stuff World. Uh, as you can see here, I just covered the entire thing with it. So I don't, I'm not sure that I really needed to go through the whole thing with the uh, wet blending of and the contrast paints, but I just wanted to make sure that it would look cool once it was done. I then took my squick on a spring and placed it inside the tiny toxic pool of goo, making sure that I, it was uh, placed exactly where I wanted it to. It was a little bit fiddly as you can see, but nothing that you can't handle. And once it was all dry, I finally got to do this. I wasn't sure if it would work, so I was very, very happy with this. I mean, there is just something fun about a bouncy squeak, right? I also, as you can see, by sort of accident, attached it a little bit crookedly so it doesn't sit like straight off from the ground but at a slight angle, which I actually think makes it look even more crazy and even more bouncy and even more dangerous. It's just like coming straight at you and it doesn't care whether it can, you know, maintain its balance or not. It's just coming to eat you and it's just, you know, stampeding towards you and I think that's just awesome. I had so much fun doing this. It was, yeah, I think, I think perhaps I have an unhealthy obsession with bouncy things. And I don't think, um, I think this whole squeak army is going to feed into that quite a bit. I love this so much. I had so much fun. I can't wait, to, wait to make more and especially some of the bigger models. That's just going to be amazing. So that was what I wanted to show you today, but before I leave, I just want to take the opportunity to thank the lovely people who support this channel over on Patreon. So thank you to Thomas Masson, Scott Broadway, Andrew Correa, Anthony Polcastro, Queen's Wolf, JJ Walsh, Gwenael, TJ Kubiak, Mando Project, Starcoin85, Esbeer, Ikinokikus, and Firelaw21. If you also want to help support this channel, you can do so over on Patreon, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Also remember you can follow me as Dyson Demons over on Twitter and Instagram if you want to stay up to date on my painting projects. I hope you liked this video and if you did, I of course always appreciate a like and a subscription to the channel and I would also love to hear your thoughts and ideas for other projects you can, uh, where you can use some sort of a spring or bounce to make your models even more fun. So let me know in the comments section if you have any suggestions for stuff you'd like to see me do in the future or if you have tried this out yourself. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.